Go ahead. Mm -hmm. This is in no way to be construed as being part of a sovereign citizen movement, quote unquote. Not, not possible. Not us. Uh, I mean, sovereign citizen. That thing is driving me crazy yeah, driving because me. they keep hammering everybody with that term. And you know, and I know, Thomas has never, ever used those words. Ever. None of, I have never either. I've never called because myself Because they don't that. go together. No. You can't be sovereign and be a citizen at the same time. But they have titles over our names and videos that they've reproduced. Yeah. And they'll title it Sovereign Citizens. Blah, blah, blah. If, and people see that. And WTAP is guilty condition. of yeah. telling, of, of uh, saying that uh, Thomas was a self-admitted. Yeah, they said he said things he never even said. Now that is a blatant out and out lie. No. Libelous, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. just thinking it sounds like a lawsuit. Yeah, well, it should be, and I, I hope it is at some point. But these these people just uh, they continue on this vein, and the term itself was conjured up by either the FBI or the Southern Poverty Law Center, or both, or both. Not exactly sure how that worked out, but they uh, they got they had a video one time of a person claiming to be a sovereign citizen, yeah. and I, I I saw that video, but that that one video, and it was a group of people just at a um, restaurant somewhere, just sitting around talking, and it had been like all the other groups infiltrated by FBI and that term was uh, was latched onto by the FBI given to I guess given to the SPLC and again I don't know which which came first it's the chicken and who's the egg but it's a pretty good analogy here um, when it appeared in in that paper in the uh, the news article for SPLC it wasn't it was weeks later where that got into the FBI training manual. So at that point, if you were labeled a sovereign citizen, you were also being labeled as a terrorist, a domestic terrorist. And the only domestic terrorists we have right now are sitting there on the bench, calling, running around calling themselves law enforcement right now, regardless of whether they're good intention intended or not you know they if they don't know that's that's not our fault that's their fault so the trooper in the witness stand sure seems to be to fall into that category well he's out looking for victims he looks angry like he doesn't look like he's um, very judgmental and hostile yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I know some law enforcement officers and good ones good people and they don't they don't give those types of looks He's got that's an, an un-american look that's it's, it's a, not a you don't get that you're an american you're you know you're defending me kind of feel from him at all and i didn't especially when he met eyes with me yesterday in the courtroom i don't know why i was looking and bam he's like looking at me because you're one of them and i'm like why yeah. what is your what is it against me and he just looks angry um so and then the three of them yesterday walking by my car i i don't even know these men i don't i don't know who i don't know them well, i've never met was them. a lady well one the, the one of them sitting behind us they had two agents sitting behind us yeah and um they were kind of plain clothes but they had you know weapons on them yeah. so you knew they were but then when they walked by me the it was a in unison look the three of them turned to the side because you see how my car's parked mm -hmm. you know and just gave me that look with a smirk they all three did at the same time yeah because of what they did to him I was, i'm assuming i don't know i still don't get it and i'm thinking <clears throat> that's i'm very disappointed because i don't even know you at all and yet you give a look like that that is not uh somebody who takes an oath I, i'm not sure if all of them it's are childish let's face it yeah it's just it's childish. not something you you expect uh your public officials to do to people there's some serious just average everyday people that and that's disappointing to well, me he's shooting judges there's, a, there's a reason for that i i firmly believe that there's a reason for that and uh i'm backed up in some of the uh documents out there that 
go to what is a prerequisite to being a law enforcement officer. And one of those things is that they search for people with IQs hovering around 100. Now, they're calling that average. I've actually heard it. If you have too high of an IQ, they won't even accept you. That's correct. Wow. Because you have to be willing and able to take orders unquestioned. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the reasoning capacity to look at such orders in a constitutional light, then they'll basically do whatever they're told. Yep. And what, it doesn't matter if they're um, told to brandish AKs, go out there in a, uh, um, a mobile attack vehicle that they purchased or got from the army. You know, it doesn't matter what they what they're told to do. They just do it like soldiers. And they're supposed to be peace officers, not soldiers. But that's what we have now. Yeah. And when you look at uh, this officer, Kevin, huh, that guy is just the uh, the epitome of uh, your, your typical law officers. He doesn't have the mental capacity to reason, but he does have the capacity to be judgmental. Snickering and laughing, and that's very telling. It's like you're sitting in a high school class, you know. Terrible. Yes, exactly. But I'm 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 grateful for what's going on in there. I hate it for Thomas that he's going through this, and no one knows exactly how this is going to pan out. But don't go there because he just might be enjoying this ride. I, I, I can't he help doesn't it. doesn't seem under distress. I, I can't help but think you're I, right. I really think he's enjoying this ride. He's on a mission, and this has given him a huge opportunity. That's that's the energy I'm getting off of it. And this is going... This is a big wake-up call. This is going on the record. This, this is not something that is uh, hearsay. This is in court. It's live. It's happening right now. And this is going to have to get out to a lot of people this whole, the whole sequence of events here. Because we've got to put this to rest one way or the other. We've got to put it to rest. They're just going to continue to uh, uh, to pick what we refer to as patriots off one at a time until there are none left to, uh, to bring this country back. So the live streaming that took place today, uh -huh. is that going to be... Um, Recorded? Yeah, where you can... Phil was Phil was recording that. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. I, heard, I know I heard Nate... Doesn't matter. Huh? Well, my question was, while they're live streaming it, are they going to have it on their site to yes. go back to well, I'm expecting it because they kept the first one on there. Did they live stream that one or just... Um, I think they did because when you came to tape in the magistrate court, um, was it live mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. No, they recorded it and I think they put it up there. But this is different. Right. Well, when you, I think whenever you do live stream, you have to take just as much time to write, record it before it can be placed on no. the site. No. Is what happens Tom is on the live stream, it is recorded as it is being streamed. Yeah. Well, well Thomas yes, was saying on the um, uh, in court on one of those tapes that. He would, it would take him like over the same oh, amount of time to record it before yeah, it would be He was saying there was a delay. Oh. Um, there is a very slight delay. I've done a lot of live streaming. There is a, a slight delay, but we're only talking about... A matter of seconds? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, so it can be recorded and, and posted. I'm, I'm telling you that it is automatically recorded when they stream because that is part of the process anytime whether it's YouTube or any anything else what? and um, you know since this is since this is public and this trial is public you know they WTAP can uh, scream all they want but this is what the public needs to see you know what I found interesting was um, well Thomas had brought this up yesterday about the copyright thing with the Robert J Morris video that, you know, saying, wait, wait, wait the FBI yeah. or whoever extracted it from, ooh, from, uh, 
Robert J. Morris's YouTube channel, and they say yep. YouTube is an open source whatever. But Phil got nailed with the copyright violation when he, with WTAP's video. Or, well, not, he didn't, I'm sorry, let me correct that. He got a letter from their attorney, the WTAP's attorney's office, saying that he was in violation of copyright or whatever and that he was to take it down. And now he has to go to copyright school before he can post anything on his channel. So the state is going and extracting other people's intellectual property. Now, I don't know in Canada, I know Thomas said they weren't sure what kind of copyright Robert J. Morris had for his, you know, whatever in Canada. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, isn't it funny how the state is just like, well, we're just going to take what we want. We don't give a crap about copyright, even if one exists, because they didn't know if there was one or not. You know, and then they, they, they're using it. And also, the same thing applies to those conference calls. Because someone sets that up, that is their conference call. When they record it, it is their conference call. Mm -hmm. Well, so, it was put on publicly, is what he's saying, because it was put on Huda. Yeah, it was put on Huda. Yeah, so they used it, but, but he was trying to redact portions of it, which that is not But right. again, here you go. Um, taken from Hudoc's site. By whose permission? Mm -hmm. Did they contact Phil and say, can we use that, that audio? In court, right. That's true. No. Mm -hmm. So you see, it's good to be king. Right. That's true. Because you can make the rules up as you go along. And that's what we see. But tomorrow's going to be an interesting day. And I think that Thomas might be able to get, uh, get everything he needs in maybe not because he's got all wealth of stuff to bring forward so if he is if the jury does not find him guilty what comes of it then does this set any sort of precedence well it's all it can do really is verify that we have something called free speech in this country but it doesn't really even go to that because this case should never have been here in the first place this is another in a long series of thought crimes. The crime was supposed to happen back on the 24th of September. The crime never occurred. Well, it never happened, yeah. Right. And yet here they are prosecuting it as if it had. And he'll bring that out tomorrow very clearly, won't he? I'm mm -hmm. um, sure he will. So. Well, I know that I've heard Reed mention before how they're using it of course that according to Reed anyway he's saying whether there was intent or whether it was without intent they're still pushing forward with it obviously with the charge you know because it's about that's how the statute is written. yeah right right, yeah. right so it doesn't matter if no one was harmed or you know basically they have set themselves up in the legislature there that um, you know, anytime something like this happens, they go and change it to work for them, so right, that right. you know they can make it easier on themselves to prosecute somebody. So those statutes have been built over time to protect them because they're written in a language that most people don't understand. I think Thomas alluded to that even in that uh, that phone call. Yeah. When they replayed that one short Video, bit yeah. about the oh, Thomas yes. made a mentioning of well, according to the statute law, I'm screwed more right. or less. You yeah. know. Yeah. I mean. Mm -hmm. That's true. And well, that's what they brought up when, when he asked him if that, he could verify that his voice. And that's what he's doing is he's using that piece because that's what he wants to, to that's what his, he's looking for or what he's drawing out. Mm -hmm. It's right. all to be impressionable to the jury. Yes. But the only thing the assistant prosecutor there, Rogers, said was, does this voice... Uh, is this is this the voice of Thomas Deegan? You recognize this as the voice of Thomas Deegan? Like that was his reason for playing that little clip over again. Like we needed to hear it twice. Right. Well, <laughs> I was like, thanks for wasting our time. <laughs> he could have asked him the same question after playing well, it was the basically just about about him saying he's screwed because of the statute. What the hell is that about? I don't even know why they played it. Like, I yeah, think that's why they play it. I think they're trying to. I think they're trying to use that to portray that he's admitting guilt. So to speak, uh, according to the statute law, well, that's the only thing okay. I took from that part. Got it. And now he'll yeah. explain it tomorrow. Right, he'll right, explain right. exactly why that is because he's good at going. He can go between different forms of law, like contract law, trust law, and then when you go to God's law, it's easy. 
you know, right, right, right. it's like you, you, you didn't harm there's, anybody. There's one, other, there's one other part to that, though, that, uh, right. <laughs> that the judge does not want them to hear. And he may not be able to get around it because it was mentioned in that, uh, that audio presentation initially that um, we have our unalienable rights. And one of those is the irrevocable right of free speech. So they cannot, the statutes, cannot override the Constitution, period. Except when the Constitution is not re recognized in the courtroom. Well, that's all, that's all fine and well, but do you think the jurors care that the judge doesn't recognize the Constitution? That's why he has it taken Do you think back they in care that he's acting in yeah. treason because <laughs> right. he doesn't he's recognize the Constitution? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. That because that's funny. what, I that's really what I'm praying, praying yeah. I was like, come take down back, in just Thomas's like, wow, I wish testimony. Yeah, yeah, Thomas would obviously have to go over all, explain that to him, and otherwise, how are they going to figure that out? Yeah, and it's not, it's not, it's not an easy uh, thing to do to to explain that that aspect. Mm -hmm. Well, Thomas yes. is good at that, though. Yes, yes, he is. Yes, he is. I wouldn't mind He's taking a crack at it everything. myself, you know. But this is his calling. Yeah, this is it is. It is. He's a very intelligent man, and nobody's giving him giving him credit except the judge knows that he's a smart man yeah and he's made mention of that on uh, on a couple of occasions and he's shown him respect mm -hmm. as a human being unfortunately the trooper can't <laughs> well he's the thing is is i think a lot of people don't realize that the fbi and the state police in most states are one and the same now they I mean they have merged into you know Weren't all the law enforcement agencies, aren't they all under the, the National Guard? I don't um, know. I don't know that. I don't know if they are or not. I'd have to look that one. I thought, unless I'm wrong, I thought I'd seen either Thomas say that at some point in time or possibly it's on a, a documented on Hudock's site somewhere in some document. I'd have to look that up hmm. to, just to verify, but I may have seen it. I'll put it that way. But I'll have to. Confirm that. <laughs> well, as, as it applies to West Virginia, bottom line, if you look on the at the corporate structure of the jail system, just the jail system, you'll find that it's run by military affairs. Right, right. I'm sorry, but what does military have to do with our, our, our justice system, our, our jails, exactly. our courts? I haven't seen that in any other state. No other state. Only here in so West far, Virginia, so one. far. Yeah. Yeah. And I've looked at a lot of them, and I haven't seen it, any. It might. It's possible. I might have seen, read that. There's a article written, and it's on the doc site. It's in the, the evidence pack, packet mm -hmm. uh, link. Uh, I think it's actually in the. Um, I believe the not where it talks about the 1933 War Powers Act. Mm -hmm. It's like 32 pages long, I think. Sometimes. I could have seen it in there, but I'll have to go back in there and check it out. Um, Who dog didn't write that, but no, it's no. just on there. Right, yeah. right, right. Well, anyway. <laughs> well, any rate, tomorrow's.